Uh, our next speaker is John Koschel, uh, who's a on what's hot in fabrication, design, and instrumentation, uh, design events, solar technology, design, fabrication, and testing. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm the division chair, of course, um, and we. Um, I'm going to use this time first to speak about the division generally, then I'm going to talk a little about astronomy, and then I'm going to inundate you with a lot of information about solar um, technology. Uh, first, FDI-specific conferences that we have coming out. We have first the uh, optical interference coatings in 2010, optical fabrication and testing in the International Optical Design Conference. Um, then we also have the Micro-Optics Conference, which alternates between Japan and Europe, and just in a few weeks it will be in Tokyo. And we're working on an FDI um, OPC, an Optics and Photonics Conference, where it will just be design, fabrication, and instrumentation, potentially. There are a number of related conferences out there. Uh, digital Holography and Three-Dimensional Imaging, which will be at the Biomedical Optics and 3D Imaging OPC. The Imaging and Applied Optics OPC has Applied Industrial Optics, and also a new conference called um, Optics for Solar Energy. And some of the content I'm going to give today will actually um, be further displayed at that conference, and that will be in Tucson in June. If you can enjoy the heat, please join us in Tucson. Uh, Renewable Energy OPC in Karlsruhe, um, Germany, will have solid state lighting and organic lighting. And we really strive to have a specific conference uh, in the FDI arena at each one of the OPCs. We see our organization is melding with the other divisions. I also wanted to point out, in an hour after this event, we will have the FDI division meeting in the Empire Room just around the corner, and we'll be talking about the optics for the National Ignition Facility. On Wednesday at 7.30 in the California Room, we're going to have the Joint Optical Design and Polarization Technical Group meeting, and they're going to talk about polarization and optical design software, easy, difficult, or impossible. So I'd love to encourage everyone to come to those meetings and learn a little more about the uh, uh, design and fabrication, instrumentation aspects of uh, optics. Let me just talk briefly about astronomy. This is the International Year of Astronomy in 2009, and maybe you've been seeing a lot of this on the news. One thing that's come out this year is the Galileo scope, and you've maybe seen some of the um, posters around, and you've maybe received email about this. It's a $20 telescope. You can buy it, it has glass, plastic lenses with excellent imaging capabilities. I'm showing a picture here of when it was released in Paris, and there are some students taking a look. And then also down in the lower um, left-hand corner by uh, Johnson is a picture of the moon taken through this telescope. It just cost $20. But the OSI ha Foundation has a challenge. If you can donate $26, they will provide a telescope to a student or a teacher or some classroom, wherever in the world. Okay? So please take, think about that. Also, starting October 5th, just uh, about a week ago, the Gal Galileo Mobile Project started. This is a group of students uh, from the ESO and Max Planck Institute, and they're traveling around the former Inca Empire in uh, Peru, Bolivia, and Chile, doing 5,000 kilometers, visiting places that have probably never seen a telescope and never would have the chance until they showed up. And they're going around with some of these Galileo scopes and giving them, and they're taking other telescopes to them so that they can view the heavens. You can follow this on various um, social networks like Facebook and Twitter. You can read all about it on their blogs. I just wanted to point these out because the OSA and the FDI division, they're, we're helping fund this project so that they could take this. And they will take this out on the road. And they will be making a documentary that you can purchase in the future. Now I'm going to inundate you with solar technology. I am famous for uh, putting a ton of information on slides. So, I encourage the chair to cut me off whenever I need to be cut off, if so needed. Um, before I get there, um, the energy solar events at FIO. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, 1.30, we will have the optics for renewable energy. Uh, keynote speaker is uh, Greg Smestead, and he will be talking about optics of solar cells. That's a keynote speaker. Whoops. And then the invited speaker following him is Dr. Malice from the University of California at Berkeley, and he'll be talking about solar production of fuels, such as uh, illuminating algae, and which then it allows you to create biofuels. Concurrent to this event, we had the first international OSA student chapter um, solar car competition, and that is in the Fairmont, Fairmont uh, uh, 
ballroom here in this hotel. And, but the final races will be on Tuesday from 12 to 2. I encourage you all to go to that. And then also uh, Dr. Smestad will be at the 2009 OSA Science Educators Day at Stanford University. This will be Thursday, so if you want to go off-site for that. And he'll be showing off the solar cell educational kits. Now let's get into solar. Let's get into the technical aspects. Solar, the total energy potential. We all hear about renewable energy methods. Solar, we have about 31 million gigawatts potential from solar. Wind, only 72,000 gigawatts, down to tidal with 4,000 gigawatts. So we better be looking at solar. It's probably one of the best avenues for getting renewable energy. This is a map that's generated on the solar load for the United States. There are like maps for the whole world. Um, this shows how much kilowatt hours per meter squared on a given day you're going to receive. We are in the Bay Area right now, the flashing little X shows where we are. We're in about in the range of five to five and a half kilowatt hour per meter squared per day. Rochester is a famous place for this meeting and they are only getting about four to five, four to four point five. I'm in Tucson and the solar meeting will be in Tucson. It's located between two very excellent regions of high solar uh, radiation and we're, we're down in the range of six to seven kilowatt hours per meter squared. The other numbers uh, you can see is that we're only generating about 0.1% of our electricity through solar, even though we have 31 million gigawatts potential there. For about 2% of the cropland and the grazing land that we're using, we could power the whole United States right now. If we used less than 0.2% of the world's land, with 10% efficiency, we would have twice the power we needed for the whole world. By 2050, we'll need about 30 terawatts in the United States alone. That would be the area of the boot uh, the, or the panhandle of Texas, a little less than that. All we'd have to do is provide solar technology at about 10% efficiency. There are various methods that we can use optics to do uh, solar energy. There's photovoltaics, PV. Uh, that's just we have some semiconductor material that's absorbing the photons and creating electrons. That's shown on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have concentrating solar power. Uh, this is where you have the absorption, uh, absorption uh, going into a liquid which then is boiled and then drives a turbine. That's really predominantly used in the southwest U.S. It requires um, direct sunlight to be effective. There are various um, types of technologies that we can use for CSP. Uh, we have troughs, we have linear Fresnel, dishes, towers. These are major structures. So these are typically being used for utilities. And the optical design community is developing these various pieces of components. It requires tracking though. That's an expensive adventure right there. If we go into PV, we have various other methods too. We have the uh, flat panel from crystal and silicon. We have thin films which we can more conform to the shape. We also have CPV, concentrating photovoltaic. This is really used for the multi-junction cells whereby they're using more of the spectrum of the optical radiation, so they're more efficient. I'm really going to uh, talk the rest of today on the CPV market. Let's look at uh, the efficiencies in the industry. These are the cell efficiencies, so we have the cell efficiencies on the vertical axis going with the year on the bottom. If we look at the pink one that's going from the uh, lower left up to the upper right, that is the multi-junction cells right there. We're getting into uh, various materials that are um, converting the photons from different parts of the spectrum. And we're up to about 42% efficiency right there. Um, however, these 3-5 cells, they're very expensive, dollars per centimeter squared. So we're going to use what we call high collection photovoltaic. We're really going to concentrate the light so that we can use the efficiencies of these devices to create more electrons. And that's going to be the focus. Now I'm going to talk about the concentrators. How do we design these? Well, what is high collection photovoltaic? On the left-hand side, I show like a flat panel. The sunlight's coming in, hits the flat panel of area A, create electricity. For the high concentration, we have the light coming into the same area, but then we concentrate it down into a smaller area. That area is given by A of the flat panel divided by the concentration, which might be anything above one. One, a thousand, hundred thousand. 